Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. If you are a subscriber, thank you for watching. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button. Today's canvas was inspired by the quote, The Earth Laughs in Flowers by Ralph Waldo Emerson. In this mixed media piece, I will showcase the techniques of using stencils to create visual texture and negative painting. So it's September and I just noticed that the maples are starting to turn color. I love the colors of fall and so I've grabbed a whole lot of my Liquitex Basics or and or off Artist Loft colors that remind me of fall and I am applying it with my fingers onto this 10 by 20 canvas. Now, when I'm placing the paints on wet on wet, I want to avoid placing colors next to each other that are across from each other on the color wheel. That's why I was showing you the color wheel. If they're next to each other on the color wheel, I can be pretty safe and secure that they're going to mix and they're going to play nice together. It's not that I can't use the purple next to the yellow. I just want to make sure that the yellow is dry before I put the purple next to it. So I am just very loosely putting this on, rubbing it in with my fingers. I have a wet rag um, beside me that I'm wiping off my fingers every once in a while. And I'm just focusing on covering this canvas, including the sides, with these lovely autumn colors. This canvas, I did pre-gesso it, as I do with most of my mixed media pieces. I'm not too worried at this stage that it's splotchy, that there's pieces of white showing. I'm just building a base coat of color. I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of stenciling on top of this. I'm going to be adding more paint. Now you notice the green where the orange and green mix kind of makes a brown color. I'm okay with that because that is part of the fall color scheme that I'm trying to create here. This is Deep Violet, which is one of my all-time favorite colors. And it just pops next to the yellow, next to the green. It just comes to life. If you don't have a tube of this Deep Violet, Liquitex Basics, oh, you got to add it to your, to your repertoire. Now, you'll notice that some places it's a little darker, a little lighter. I'm... I'm thinking that's adding visual interest to, to this canvas. Now, while I'm doing this on a 10 by 20 canvas, you can do this on an art journal page, following the exact steps. In fact, it'll probably be easier. Working on a canvas is somewhat difficult because it has give. Working on a flat surface, such as an art journal page or a canvas board, is somewhat easier, especially when it comes to stamping and stenciling. This is Art Minds Paint, and it's a deep burgundy color. I was hoping for a richer burgundy color. I'm in search of a really rich burgundy. But this one has kind of a more of a gloss finish than the other paints. And I hope you can tell from from watching this, I am not being too precise at all. Now you could put this on with a brush, personal choice. Sometimes I just like getting my fingers all covered in paint. Now I'm going to be using some, a variety of stencils to add visual texture. Now I'm using the same colors that I used in the background through the stencil. Now this one is, they're all to the Crafters Workshop stencils. This one's the Ripples stencil which I've had for a long time, 
but it really hasn't been used. And oh my gosh, I really am loving it. So I'm putting it on and often when I use one stencil, I might put on a couple different colors. And while I'm trying, I'm going with the purple paint, the deep violet, I'm going to go on lighter areas. I'm not too worried. This stencil is called Circle of Jewels. And I'm putting, you know, some yellow through here this time. And again, I'm trying to target mainly the areas that are darker because they're going to show the yellow. If I put yellow on yellow, it's not going to have much life to it. Many of these paints are transparent. They, you can still see, they're not going to give a solid coverage. And that's what I like. Don't forget to put the, to right, take the stencil right off the edge of the canvas as well. And I am taking some of these stencils and putting it on the sides to kind of wrap around. This is the Art Is stencil. I just thought it would be nice to have some little bits of script peeking through. What I would like to do is find a stamp that has bigger script, but I haven't found one yet. So if you know of one, please put it in the comment section. My goal here isn't to even have this necessarily readable. It's just another piece of visual interest. This is the Crafters Workshop Crazy Wave Stencil, and it has four different patterns on it. There's these spirals, there's the dots, there's the triangles. So when you pull out this one, you actually have four different textural items. I'm also using Prussian Blue here, and I know you've heard me talk about Prussian Blue. It is, again, one of my favorite colors. Again, and primarily because it's beautiful on its own, but when you put it on top of the pinks that are in here, or the magentas, or the purples, it really comes to life. Now I'm using this Coastal Escape, I believe it's Kaiser Craft Stencil. But the links to all of these will be in the description box below. So click the arrow and go down, and I'm putting this stamp, which looks like netting, with gold acrylic paint. I want that richness, I want that shine and shimmer. Just spreading out the paint. Now I'm using a embroidery plastic mesh and I'm using that as a stamp. And it works perfect. It's one of my favorite stamps. These stamps work well like this as a stamp. Now this is shelf liner. I'm putting on some gold with this shelf liner. Another one of my favorite stamps. So if you don't have a huge budget and or don't have craft stores right there handy, go to the dollar store and get several different kinds of shelf liners. Get plastic embroidery mesh. Get Lego pieces. They all make beautiful mark making tools. I'm absolutely loving this background right now, the richness of these colors. I have taken a recent trip to Bouchard Gardens and the several of the areas that they planted and the flowers that were blooming right now were these colors. So here's another dollar store find. These these flowers were actually part of kind of a home decor square. I think that the idea was you put them on the wall 
And I cut it apart out of the square and they have sat in my stash for a lot of years. I've used them a little bit on my gel plate back when I got them three years ago, but they've been sitting here and I've pulled them out for this purpose. So I've made extra copies of this out of paper just to get the orientation and I'm paying attention. I want them overlapping because I'm going to do um, some shading and I want this to look kind of 3D. So I'm just using the Stabilo All Pencil here and, you know, making a decision which petal is going to go on top of which petal. And I made a decision that all three, there's three bigger flowers here. All three of the bigger flowers are going to kind of be at the bottom of the pile. And then the other ones are going to be on top. I like using this Stabilo Oil Pencil because it will disappear, you know, once it's activated and I take a baby wipe, I can just get rid of any of the marks. If I make a mistake, if I change my mind about where I want something, I can erase it. You can use watercolor pencils for this um, as well. I'm using the black because you need it to show up. Um, if this was... I might also have used the white one. Now, if you are someone who can draw, then you can do this all freehand. Even if I could, I would draw freehand the shape of the flower and still make templates to trace around so that I could get them somewhat similar. But I'm not going to fret if something is a little off. And you saw me there wrapping the flower around the edge of the canvas. You're going to see the edge of the canvas and the flowers, you know, just wrap around the edges. It looks very cute. So here I've used my Prussian blue and my angle brush and I've got some folk art float medium and I'm just shading around these flowers and I'm not filming the entire part here because it does take a considerable amount of time and I've decided that I'm shading inside of the flower sometimes I shade on the outside sometimes I shade on the inside sometimes I do both but I'm loving how the Prussian blue is just making these flowers pop out. This really was a labor of love. I enjoyed this canvas. The, the colors made me happy. I'm just using the Q-tip there to get rid of any paint that it goes where I don't want it to be. And I'm turning the canvas and drying it as I go. Turning because I want to make sure it's easy for me to do the float technique. And it's a bit of an eye strain because there's a lot going on on this canvas between the bright multi colors and the stencil patterns. And, you know, I'm trying to find my Stabilo All Pencil lines. If I forget what shape I'm going for, I just put the shape back, like you see me doing here, and, you know, retrace or just kind of follow now that I've got a visual guide as well. got a little too dark so I'm just lifting some of the paint off.
You can fast forward through some of this if you want. I find doing this float technique very calming. I could just do, you do that for hours and hours. So now I'm using Prussian blue um, is it high flow? It's the only pre golden fluid acrylic and I, I thought it'd be a little bit more transparent and I'm just painting the negative parts out. Now, it, while it looks like it covers it, you can still see the patterns and the textures that we created in this background. It took me a while. I think it was overnight. I was highly considering just leaving it just with the shading because I really liked how it looked. But I thought, okay, no, my plan was to do negative painting, so I'm going to stick with that. And again, this took a little bit of time to get done because again, it's a pretty big piece. It's 20 by 10. I believe I'm using a small angle brush here to get the paint into these little, little bits. So now that all of that's done, I'm going to do the float technique with white. And I'm, this is going to add highlights to these flowers. And if I was in love with this before, once I started doing this, it just really seemed to come to life again, even more so. Now my goal isn't to make a white line right around it. I'm just adding some highlights. And like I said in one of my past videos, I'm not really following the rules of where the light's coming from. I'm just going by what looks good. And as you can see right there, right above where I'm going, I missed a part of the background that will, I'll come in and I'll paint that with the Prussian blue as well. So I'm just going to continue using this as I go. And as I've said before, there is a technique tag video where I talk about shading using various ways, including this float technique. This technique takes some getting used to. I learned it when I did folk art painting on wood. And as I started doing a lot of shading in different ways on mixed media pieces in my art journaling, I found myself remembering this and applying it, that technique, to this medium.
I think this canvas took about an hour and a half for me to finish all told. Maybe two hours. I don't think I even captured it all in film. I'm loving it. I hope you do too. Here's some close-ups. If you like what I created, if you're learning from it, leave a comment below. Love to hear from you. I answer back to everybody, every single comment. Give me a thumbs up. Check out my Amazon store. Thank you if you buy anything through there. And I'll see you for the next video.